that is the divider. If this is your first time here, my name is Brian and I make all kinds of freshwater fish keeping videos. In this channel, I cover things like DIY projects related to the aquarium hobby, along with giving you guys updates on all of my fish. So if you like what you're checking out, stay tuned and hit that subscribe button and I appreciate your support. So over the weekend, I went ahead and spent some time and leveled out my stand. Check it out. So here it is. I went ahead and got some steel plates from the front and the back, which is right there. And then I also have some steel plates right here as well. And the reason why I went with steel is because uh, I figured that since this was like this type of material is towards the bottom and it's kind of pointy, you know. So if I had a piece of wood, that would go straight into the wood and uh, pretty much indent it and could possibly collapse. The guy at the hardware store told me to avoid aluminum plates, so I went ahead and did that. Picked these guys up and it's pretty squared off. Check it out. See, it's off by a little bit, but it's pretty much there. You guys see that? Yeah, the front and back is perfect. This is honestly the best tool when it came to like setting up fish tanks and stuff. So let me go ahead and give you a breakdown on why I was trying to get my tank as level as possible. So I guess the logic behind it is if your tank is too much that way, uh, all the water weight is going to get pushed on that panel right there and pretty much cause it to have a lot of unnecessary stress. So um, just imagine all the weight being pushed on this panel here. It could probably, it could probably damage the seals. What's this? Oh, it's extra silicone. But it can probably damage the seals. It can probably crack the glass. And um, I don't know, all kinds of bad news. So I'd rather deal with leveling out my stand compared to dealing with that plate or that panel messing up. Level and shim your stand, but don't level and shim your tank. So let's say, for example, this tank was slanted or something. You don't want to be like shimming in between the tank and the stand you want to pretty much shim the whole thing because if you shim right here that's going to cause a pressure point and that's going to like destroy this whole side and when it comes to diy projects online i would probably do my own research what works for me and others might not work for you so i would just kind of play it by like the scenario and um just use your best judgment when it comes to doing diy stuff to your tanks because you definitely don't want a huge mess on your hand because that's gonna suck anyways back on topic the project for today is going to be the sump right here as you can see the flow isn't as crazy on this side and that's good because we're going to be dividing this tank in half today and as you can tell by the beginning of this video my divider came in today and it's pretty sick look at this dude this is tight like you can't really tell because it's on my hood, but this is a really big divider. Like this is, I'm talking about, this can probably divide my big tank. Oh yeah, I can. It's supposed to be cut to size. It's a clear material, but from what I've seen on the Amazon reviews and stuff, um, it becomes like wavy and stuff over time. For me, it's not really a problem because it's gonna be in my sump and all I needed to do is divide the K1 from the refugium or the planted area safely and I'll be happy. So I don't really care if it turns clear or it turns white or it turns whatever color it needs to turn. Just as long as it does it safely, then I'm okay. The, <laughs> the, the, the drawing is like a it's, a, it's a, it's a Nemo, you know? And then it's like a little mini shark. It's made by this Chinese company. I'll go ahead and put the link in the description and uh, I'll let you guys know if I had a good experience with it or not. And this is actually the reason why I liked it a lot because as you can see here in this picture, uh, the divider goes all the way up to the edge and uh, leaves no gaps. If I had gaps, the K1 would be flowing out. I've had that happen before and it sucks. So um, yeah, I'm glad it came out with this design. I'm probably gonna have to trim this area, but let's just go ahead and start this and see how it turns out. Has like a little hole here. Might be for a suction cup. tight so you can see it's literally a sheet of plastic and um yeah man we're just gonna have to cut this up and all that let's see if we can peel this i don't really care if it gets scratched though so, um let's go ahead and peel this now oh yeah look at that pretty sick i would suggest peeling this when you're done uh, if this is in your show tank or in your main display, 
But since it's going in my sump and it's gonna get scratched up no matter what anyways, I'm just gonna peel it now. Look at this. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Ooh. Ooh. Static, dude. It's not sticky, it's just static. And it comes with both sides, so when you get it and it and it doesn't look clear to you, then um yeah, just know that you have to peel the sticker off. So in the reviews I was reading, people were saying that, oh, this thing was supposed to be clear, but it came in like white or off-white or something. And the people didn't know they had to peel this off in order for it to be clear. So when you get it, just peel it off and it'll be, and it'll be clear. Super clear. So this is what the end product looks like. We're going to have to cut this to shape and then uh, we'll go ahead and put it in the tank and see how it fits. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put this in the tank and uh, just line it up. So, I mean, you don't have to wash it because, I mean, it had a cover on it, so I'm, I'm not gonna wash it. Might be my downfall, but whatever. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do a practice cut. Let's see how well this cuts. Oh, this is easy. This is hella soft, this is super soft. Look, it, like, you don't even need effort and you'll cut through it. So what's good about this is there's like a little holes along the whole bottom. So you can't, you you physically can't cut it crooked. Just follow the holes and you won't cut it crooked. And the good thing about this material is it won't crack. Some materials, when you cut it, it'll crack. I'm about to speak, I'm about to speak too soon. Oh, cracked it. So you see right here, that's where it cracked. So what happened was uh, I was cutting it with the scissors, the little ones, and then uh, it cut through, it hit the hole, and then smacked straight into the side, and then it pretty much cracked the hell out of it. So uh, be careful when you guys cut it. Uh, I thought it wasn't gonna crack, but um, yeah, it ended up, that ended up happening, so be careful. It's doing pretty good for the most part, and we don't even have the suction cups in there yet. Let's go ahead and... Uh get this a little bit more fitted. I think I can cut probably one more row and we'll go ahead and see how straight this thing ends up being because right now there's a little curve to it. Actually, before we start cutting more, let's go ahead and um, open these up. Damn, this looks tight. So it comes with these little suction cups right here, which is pretty sick. And it also comes with these L brackets. So here are the screws that come with it. It pretty much looks like this. And you you just push it in to this uh, little area right here. And then go ahead and push this. And that's uh, kind of how it holds it in place. And then uh, there's a locking, like a back locking part that I'm not gonna use yet. But you're pretty much pushing it into this little nipple thing and it'll lock it in place. And pretty much that's how it gets stuck on the side of the glass. And you won't have any gaps if you cut the plastic perfectly. So keep that in mind. So as you can see, this divider came with a lot of little pieces. So suction cup, a uh, little L bracket, and hardware to go with each and every single L bracket. Which is uh, pretty tedious to put on. It's a screw and it's a bolt. And the reason why I chose this, which is usually the top portion of the divider to be at the bottom, is because most of the flow in my sump is towards the bottom and I need more holes to kind of pass through. But with those bigger holes down there, uh, it'll be a lot better for flow to reach the other side of my sump. So let's go ahead and mount this up into the tank and I'll go ahead and tighten up these little hardware pieces when we actually have it in the sump. That took um, a very long time, but we're finally done. Check it out. So all the K1 is on the right side. And uh, this way we can see if we went ahead and put the divider on good. As you can see, we did. Uh, it's on pretty straight. And uh, it's like a little bit of tris here. What is this? That's snails. So a bunch of snail bodies here uh, we have to get rid of. Yeah, I can see some got into the suction cup right here. So, uh, when I do my next maintenance, I'll go ahead and double check to see if uh, these suction cups are holding up. But for the most part, 
this is exactly what I was looking for. Uh, it's doing a really good job for right now, but this is not gonna be a really good review if I don't let it at least run overnight. We're gonna go ahead and come back tomorrow and see where this guy's at. Look at that. I still have to make a video on this. It's one of my uh, more interesting setups. I can never find my crab though, um, but later on when I have time, I'll go ahead and do a, like a little build breakdown. Although there's not really much that's going on in here, it's just pieces of uh, Malaysian bogwood or driftwood, and then the dehydrated moss, and then a handful of other goodies that's inside the water column area. But yeah, when the, when the crab decides to come out more often, uh, I'll go ahead and make a video on it and give you guys an update on this guy. I've taken the light off my planted tank and I uh, went ahead and put it on the sump. And it's looking really good and it's lighting this area up really well. And I don't really have to worry too much about this side because it's just K1. So right here, as you can see, there's a big open area. I think the dimensions for this little cube area is 18 by 18 by maybe 12 if I raise the water line up a little bit. So I can technically put some kind of fish in here, but as for right now, I'm just gonna load it up with plants. Let's go ahead and check out this divider though. So you can see, um, the reason why there's a little bend there is because I want constant pressure on the suction cups on each end. So that's why there's a bend. Now, if it was straight, there wouldn't be constant pressure consistently pushing on these suction cups, uh, which will help hold them in place. Hell of a try this built up on this side right here. This is the try this got pushed from this side and ended up on this side. So you know what, as I'm standing here looking at this, I just had a crazy idea. I'm gonna break down the planet tank and fill this side right here with all the plants that's in the planet tank. All this stuff right here, this is all going outside. I mean, look at all the hornwort that grew though. It's pretty nuts. Dude, this is hell of plants. This is like all the plants that's in the planet tank. This is hell of plants, dude. It's crazy. It's crazy how much plants. Dude, that, dude all this was in a tin yelling. All right, so I also got all the fish that was in that tank, and I just decided to move everyone in the section. The holes in the divider, they aren't big enough for adult shrimp and fish to get through. Even if they do get through, the flow isn't as crazy anymore, so they could survive on the other side, so I'm not too worried about it. So K1 on one side, and then hella plants on the other side. And with them in this little container, it's gonna benefit these guys. So, the plants got an upgrade. The bikers here got an upgrade. Everybody got an upgrade. So that's it for today's video. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. And peace, guys. Mm -hmm.